Welcome to Next Gen Observability to Ensure Business Resilience. On the Cube, I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with the Cube Research. Today, we're going to dive into why observability is so essential to ensure business resilience, especially exploring the evolving digital landscape, the explosion of AI agents, and why Dynatrace and Microsoft have teamed up to address these challenges. To help me unpack this, let me welcome to the show Alois Wright Bauer, who's the Chief Technology Strategist at Dynatrace, and Eve Pisalti, who's the Senior Director of AI at Microsoft. Welcome on board. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. Well, let's jump in because I, I think this is always really exciting. AI and AI agents and agentic technology is just really, you know, taking over, I think, the landscape. And a lot of people are trying to figure out how do they build their cloud native applications and tie in traditional applications with AI. So let's kind of explore first, though, the relationship that Dynatrace and Microsoft have. Uh, Alois, can you start us off? Can you share kind of the history of the deep technical partnership and how it's really evolved to meet customer needs? So we have obviously a lot of our customers that invest in cloud technologies and obviously also invest in AI technologies and very often these cloud technologies obviously run, uh, sorry, these AI technologies run in the cloud as well. Lots of our customers are using Azure also, our own SaaS offering is running uh, on Azure, so providing our customers a native experience um, to work, uh, to have the observability available from Dynatrace as they're using their uh, cloud environments. And what we provide, like, really is observability and security for their, we'd say, more traditional workloads, but also their AI workloads with AI observability. But we don't stop there just showing them the data, but also helping them to identify problems and optimization pro um, potential, remediate issues, and also help um, with automation to automatically resolve them. And there obviously it's also key to have um, a partner like Microsoft and a cloud infrastructure that allows to do this in a like very automated way. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But Eve, let's bring you in on this one as well. And how do you see it from your side, this deep technical partnership and how it's really evolved? Absolutely. We're very uh, excited to be partnering with that Dynatrace uh, in order to harness the power of the Microsoft Azure platform, right? I mean, from our end, we are building the platform, whether it's at the cloud base or the AI, with the AI capabilities that we bring in. And we really depend on partners like Dynatrace to really activate the business value. Um, and we know that uh, uh, getting really advanced insights and security um, uh, insights is top of mind for customers. So having kind of like a deep and robust observability platform on top of your cloud and AI infrastructure is absolutely key. Yeah, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think Eve, again, you know, where do you see the role of observability playing in what customers are doing as they optimize and look to optimize their infrastructure and their applications. Because I, I have to imagine, especially with applications being built out and leveraging AI, that observability has to play a pretty key role in that. Absolutely, 100%. We're saying that if you don't, uh, you don't know what you can't see. So basically, observability becomes a critical factor in helping customers optimize their infrastructure and applications. It provides visibility into the behavior and the per, per performance of the AI models. Um, it also helps uh, identify shifts in data patterns, so what we call data drift de de detection. It helps identify um, road, puts, road cause uh, root cause, excuse me, uh, analysis for failure. Um, and uh, it's a, a resource to further optimize uh, your infrastructure by monitoring usage and identifying any, um, you know, pa patterns that you need to intervene. Yeah, no, I, I love that. You can't really uh, manage what you can't, you know, see uh, in the infrastructure and you definitely can't, you have to be able to measure it so you understand things like drift and everything. But coming back to Alois, uh, how do you see the increasing, you know, adoption of cloud and AI technologies 
changing the enterprise landscape and what are the key trends influencing this change that you've seen? So let's start with the trends. What we obviously see um, that more and more processes and business processes are run in a digital way. And they're not only run in a digital way, but they run digital first. Just think of something that happens to you, like us who are traveling a lot for business quite frequently. Checking into a flight used to be going to a counter, talking to somebody, getting a printout tickets. Today, this process is fully automated. And we see more and more of those processes becoming automated, uh, which allows you to have that, that really leading edge in your business. Now AI coming on top, we can automate even more advanced, more complex business processes. What this requires at the same time on the back end, we need to build more and more complex um, software systems to actually make this, um, to make this possible. That means we have more and more services that interact with each other. We can't afford downtimes anymore. And we are constantly introducing new technologies like generative AI, for example. So these environments become more and more complex and become harder and harder to manage. So if we would still apply uh, very traditional approaches to manage those applications, it would not work. And that's how observability and also AI in observability comes into play, really supporting the people who have to keep these applications that allow these modern experiences to be available um, for customers, to run them, to optimize them, and to keep them really like running in a 24 seven uh, way on also allowing them to mitigate potential problems, ideally in a way that customers would not even re recognize that something is might be wrong at the back end or something might not be working um, as expected. And then what we can see is that really this amount of uh, uh, processes is increasing and we also see more and more of our customers really using the quality of the digital of their digital services as a key business differentiator. Yeah, I, I think that's key. I, I, when you start to look at how organizations are building out their application stacks, the, you know, going from having the three-tiered applications to having multi-tiered applications, but using things like microservices on the front end and in the middle layers and things of that nature, and then bringing in Gen AI, definitely, you know, complicates the entire uh, stack and understanding, as, as Eve was saying, around you know, understanding root cause and things like that is, you know, ever, ever changing and, you know, moving, moving the lines of where you need to see. But, you know, Eve, you're, you're on the front lines of the ever evolving AI field. I mean, again, it's, it's crazy how fast this is changing uh, pretty much week to week at this point. How is Microsoft strategically positioning itself to innovate in the enterprise space for AI? <laughs> You're absolutely true that the landscape is evolving rapidly. What we uh, were seeing last year is uh, diametrically now cha cha changes and uh, it's changing really fast. The good thing is that uh, now enterprises and companies are really um, including AI into their business planning, into their strategy. Uh, because they start to see the business value. They start to see the ROI. They start to see the increase in pro pro productivity um, and uh, all of the benefits that, you know, kind of like uh, some of the automations bring. So from our end, what we're doing, uh, A, we are trying to provide as much variety in terms of AI models as possible. So we have our own AI models from our research centers across vision, language, um, uh, and speech. We also have the generative AI models, the large language models through our collaboration with OpenAI that we make available into the Azure AI, uh, the Azure AI platform. We also have third party um, uh, AI models with our collaboration with uh, Mistral, Cohere, G42 and others. So we try to provide as much variety as possible because you might want to consider and evaluate uh, which AI model will fit for the use case and the scenario that you have. Um, but also we spend a lot of time and engineering effort building the right responsible AI capabilities. So the AI model does not only need to be accurate and robust, um, easy to deep deploy, um, you know, easy to fine tune and customize, but it needs to have the right responsible AI capabilities. 
in order to drive governance, to, um, you know, make sure that uh, you know that these models are tran trans trans transparent, uh, avoid any bias. So um, our goal is to provide the latest and greatest in terms of mod mo models, especially now with new capabilities coming into market, like multi-model models and also invest heavily in making sure that we bring this to market with a most robust and well thought out responsible AI capabilities. Yeah, it, it seems like that's a, a big thing. How do you bring all of the pieces together so that, uh, you know, customers have their choice of how they're going to build it, either using it via API or using it straight out or, you know, building their own and fine tuning and doing all of those pieces, maybe doing RAG. I, it seems like Microsoft is really trying to give choice to those customers. Absolutely. And the scenario will change by industry too, right? I mean, we see a lot of applications uh, vary across uh, in industries. Um, you know, in healthcare, we see a lot of applications when it comes to uh, diagnostics or personalized treat, treat, treatments. In finance, we see AI really playing a critical role in real-time fraud de de detection or um, uh, any personalized financial uh, advice. Um, in retail, we see a lot of use cases around inventory ma management. Um, and in manufacturing, uh, we see um, how AI plays a key role in predictive maintenance and then um, kind of like, you know, uh, other use cases around uh, improving uh, the efficiency all out. Yeah, no, I think that's key. I mean, it, again, there's so many different ways AI, not just gen AI, but AI in general and the combination of what was, you know, ML and AI bringing it together. But uh, Luis, let's bring you back in here and uh, understand, you know, how is Dynatrace le leveraging AI in the platform to enhance that customer experience? And can you really provide us some examples on how AI is helping enterprise customers drive innovation and differentiate yourselves in the market as well. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, we have all of these environments that start to get more complex and powerful at the same time. What this means they're getting harder to manage, as mentioned before, and where AI can help you is first of all, understanding what is going on in your system in real time. That means which changes did happen. And in case of problems, also help you with automatically understanding the root cause of a problem but also adding predictive capabilities in there with uh, predictive AI so that it's able to foresee changes and act before a problem might actually occur because you already see that more users are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, working on your system and, and things are changing as they go. And then last but not least, bringing Gen AI into the mix on helping to automatically make proposals for how to remediate the situation. This is also what led us to build um, our own uh, AI, which is called the Dynatrace Hypermodal AI, uh, also referred to as Davis. And the idea is to combine multiple forms of AI, to AI together to like really provide the best outcomes. It really starts on the predictive side, understanding how a system should behave and when it's not behaving as it's expected to, which is usually referred to as anomaly detection. So you expect, for example, your response times to be in a certain range. Your conversions, you're expecting a certain number of people being on your website and suddenly you might not see them. And then causal AI that helps you to understand why things are going a certain way in your environment, whether it's a problem that's occurring, your costs are going up and so forth, really understanding what is cause and effect. And very importantly, these two things really happen in real time. So instead of having people dig through all that data, it happens in real time that analysis is done for them. And once a problem has been identified or a potential problem has been anticipated or an optimization, we can then use Gen AI feeding all this information because obviously Gen AI is not only as good as the underlying model that you have, but also as good as the data and the prompt that you're providing. And by doing this, we can provide a very specific, a very detailed prompt to the Gen, to Gen AI to help uh, resolve an issue by maybe changing your deployment scripts and um, adopting other parts of your environment or even hooking into core parts of your application 
Like if you realize, for example, that a customer is not able to finish and complete the transaction online. So instead of letting them try it again and again, and obviously in worst case, having them leave your site without even buying something, you can proactively trigger a workflow, share all that information with the customer support agent, and then open a chat right away and help the customer resolve the issue right in that situation. While this then might not be the experience that the customer had from the very beginning, it is still a satisfactory experience to that customer and it can help mitigate not only on the technical side, but also on the business side. And you also can do it obviously at scale because as you can imagine, if you would have to do all of this manually, not only would you usually be too late because it takes you too long to analyze the data, you couldn't do it at scale if you have to work with like millions of customers. If all of these steps would be manually, uh, it would almost be impossible by the amount of people who you would need to, to provide an equal customer experience here. Yeah, and, and this really, I mean, I've known both companies for quite some time and this, to your point on Davis and multimodal AI, this is not Dynatrace's first rodeo with AI. AI has been in kind of in the product for quite some time. That's true. So we started uh, like roughly 11 years ago. And the question back then was like, we t teach people how to analyze performance problems. Back then it was only performance. Today it's obviously also security related issues. And the question was always like, why do we have to teach people to do this? It's a very well-defined domain. And we thought if we can build up a real-time model of how a system is behaving, that we can keep updated. And if we use AI techniques, just as predictive as mentioned and causal, to find out when something is going wrong and then link it all together and put it into this causal dependency chain, um, wouldn't this be a much better idea? Actually, this has shown uh, with customers who see much better MTTR, can resolve problems faster, and like really see massive optimizations in there. And then recently with the rise of Gen AI, we kind of took the last step because customers were always asking us, so if you already know what the problem is, why can't you fix it? And actually this takes two ingredients to make this possible. Number one is you need an interface that is declarative that you can interact with your entire software uh, infrastructure. So luckily we have all of this infrastructure as code capabilities, also as part of Azure, where we can easily change the configuration of an environment in a declarative way. So now the nice thing is that Gen AI models understand this infrastructure as code and can help us to modify and make proposals how to modify that environment. And all of this is obviously infused by the capabilities we have on the predictive and causal side. And that's also why we refer to the Dynatrace approach as hypermodal AI, because one type of AI connects to the other type, connects yet to the other type of AI, and also provides information so that the different AIs can work better together. Yeah, oh, it totally makes sense. I mean, hypermodal and being able to leverage all of that and you know the 11 years of experience, that definitely makes sense. But that kind of brings us to our, our final question uh, to both of you is, you know, around how does AI-driven observability really enhance the customer's cloud environment through the ability to gain those real-time insights. And why don't we start with you, Eve, and then we'll go to Alois after. Yeah, I would say that um, uh, balancing AI innovation with governance is really key. Uh, establishing a clear AI governance framework, really defining the right business case, driving the right experimentation, establishing and using the right observability capabilities, and really creating that feedback loop is how you ensure that you, uh, you know, utilize uh, the AI kind of like mo models and capability uh, capabilities effectively um, and driving the right business outcome. Um, again, with our collaboration with uh, uh, Dy Dynatrace, we see that um, you know we can combine uh, Microsoft Azure cloud capabilities and AI capabilities with Dynatrace observability and monitoring sol sol solutions. And as Alois was saying, bringing cash to customers this real-time insights can really help them um, diagnose any per performance issues, 
uh, they can ensure that their applications are more re reliable, they can go to market faster. Um, so really having kind of like a cloud native sol sol solution that has the right AI cap capabilities, um, you know, in this case from the Azure AI platform is really key. Um, and uh, I feel like this is the right time to really, really um, excel this collaboration and uh, really continue to invest in co-developing so, so, so solutions as these get um, integrated into, you know, the various emerging uh, uh, kind of like business areas. Totally agree. And uh, Alois, how do you see the AI-driven observability really enhancing, you know, that cloud experience for these cloud-native applications and getting those real-time insights as well? Um. I think I've mentioned these environments get larger and I was in more powerful, but you need more and more components. All of these components um, are provided by Microsoft with um, of the Azure cloud and people can like combine them as they need. They can even change them at, at, at runtime, but they really want to focus on providing business value. So you don't want to figure out if something is not working as you expect it to work, what's actually going on and invest most um, of your time and effort there. With the AI-powered observability, you can delegate a lot of this to Dynatrace, telling you which change is the reason why the system is behaving differently. Or if there is uh, any problem coming up with a new software release or some unexpected behavior, pointing you right to where uh, you need to apply the fix and how to further optimize the system. The same also obviously for security, where you need to optimize, tweak and tune uh, for security. So what it actually does, it's a very nice application of how AI enriches our day-to-day -day work, in this case, the work of SRE and DevOps team to provide great user experience by taking off a lot of the heavy lifting, looking at the data, analyzing it, um, and eventually presenting it to a human so that you can take the proper decision. And what this also allows you to do, obviously, is not just provide a better experience because you're reacting to issues ideally proactively, on, or at least faster than you could do it manually, but also you can do it with um, the less amount of people who would have to look at this because as you're using more services, otherwise you would have to constantly have more people looking at those services, analyzing how they're behaving. And last but not least, it's also a quality of life, uh, quality of work. Uh, in this case, maybe a bit more thing for the people who have to run those systems. So usually when things go wrong, that's a very stressful situation. You have to take the right decisions in seconds because otherwise your business is at risk, your reputation is at risk. And by helping people to take those right decisions in the right moment, and the best case, even fully automating them wherever possible, you're also making their day to life, their life better, which eventually then also allows them to focus on other tasks because more and more gets automated. So I think it is a key differentiator on the one and building those systems, but also running them as customers expect them to be run and also leveraging AI uh, to really let us, the humans, uh, focus on innovation rather than keeping the lights on. Yeah, no, I, I think you both hit on some really extremely important topics in here that with the governance, the observability and the visibility into the infrastructure, how you need to be able to do that at scale and be able to see all of the parts and pieces and how they interact has become just mind-blowingly huge for organizations. So I, I wanna thank you both for coming on board and helping us unpack this very important topic. Uh, I think it'll help organizations really get to production with their cloud native and AI applications uh, much quicker. I think that, you know, again, understanding governance, observability and how they tie together all the way down to the underlying AI infrastructure uh, is so key. So thanks for coming on board. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and thank you for watching this episode of Next Gen Observability to Ensure Business Resilience. Stay tuned for more on this topic on theCUBE, the leader in tech news and analysis.